From WatchMojo, I'm Kaylee Bowen. This is The Daily. Welcome back to Watch Mojo. Today we have a very special guest with us, the most powerful person in the world, Nicholas Zhang. Caitlin? Thank you for joining us today, Mr. President. Yep. So I wanted to talk to you about your recent endorsement of hydrochloroquine. Obviously there's been some contention between both parties on the efficacy of the treatment. Unnecessary, but, but yeah. Right. So can you elaborate as to why you think hydrochloroquine is an effective treatment for the novel coronavirus? Right. So I think it's been around for a long time, right? It hasn't hurt anybody. Um, you know, a lot of good molecules, a whole lot of cells in there, you know, all that good stuff. Um, it's a great drug made to cure the coronavirus. Millions of doctors are taking it. You know what, Caitlin? When you look at all of the people who are rejecting it, they're all part of the fake news media. They don't want a cure coming from this administration. All they- I think we should set the record straight as to what hydroxychloroquine actually is. I agree. So hydroxychloroquine was first developed as just quinin, a chinchona tree bark derivative. Almost two centuries later, the active ingredient was isolated and used for anti malaria purposes. This was used until the mid 1940s when hydroxychloroquine was developed as a less toxic substitute. Wait, so in what ways was it toxic? So it was known to cause abdominal cramps, blurred vision, and muscle weakness, but they kind of just had to deal with it until they found a better solution. And as for how it's used today, hydroxychloroquine is secondarily used to treat rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, both autoimmune uh, inflammatory diseases. But most of the time it's used to treat malaria, right? So it's not a COVID-19 cure? Right and right. It's not proven that hydroxychloroquine is an effective COVID-19 cure. So malaria is actually caused by a parasite, Plasmodium. The infection starts when someone is bitten by an infected female mosquito. The parasite passes from the mosquito saliva to the blood where it moves to the liver, destroying liver cells, and is then transported back into the bloodstream, this time surrounded by merosomes to infect red blood cells. What's a merosome? Great question. A merosome is a structure on liver cells. When it surrounds the plasmodium parasite, it works to camouflage the parasite and prevent signals from being broadcasted that would signal macrophage ingestion. These mature parasite cell structures, called schizonts, are filled with merozoites, also pictured here, which are built to invade, built to invade ethrocytes, also known as red blood cells. They invade when the schizont form of plasmodium ruptures, releasing merozoites. The apical pole of the parasite isn't oriented against the host cell membrane, and adhesion proteins bind to those on the ethrocyte surface. A junction is formed by the binding of AMA and RON2, and ultimately a myosin head reacts with the substrate to generate force of movement that allows the parasite to move into the cell. The parasite then remodels the red blood cell once it has entered, making it rigid and poorly deformable. This is what causes the majority of malaria complications. And I think this is where the beauty of hydroxychloroquine lies. The drug is administered by virtue of tablets, usually two to 400 milligram doses. After being broken down in the GI tract, hydroxychloroquine makes its way into the target cells, vacuoles, where it carries out its main functions. Hydroxychloroquine works by inhibiting antigens and their corresponding antigen-presenting cells. This causes a downregulation of the T cell production and a decrease in reactivity against autoantigens. What about side effects? What do we know about that? Basic side effects include headache, dizziness, ringing in ears, nausea and stomach pain, loss of appetite, and weight loss. The most notable side effects are visual impairment. Hydroxychloroquine affects the metabolism of retinal cells and combine to melanin in the retinal pigment epithelium. This explains the persistent toxicity after discontinuation of medicine. Cardiac arrhythmia. Hydroxychloroquine modifies ion channels, causing an inhibition of potassium flow and an increase in the length of electrical waves, known as QTC prolongation. The waves will begin to overlap, disturbing normal muscle contraction, leading to cardiac arrhythmia, which can lead to cardiac arrest, stroke, or death. 